Hello. On behalf of Integrative Medicine at Trinity Health of New England, I want to welcome you to this week's installment of Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring, in a brief format, tools for wellness that will benefit you, our colleagues, and our community at large. I'm Dr. Kathy Muller, and today we will be finishing our discussion on sleeplessness and insomnia. We started uh, two weeks ago, and we started talking about bed noise. Last week, we talked about reducing uh, mind noise, and this week, we're going to be talking about reducing body noise. And so, as I share my screen, we will begin just this brief presentation. And so bed noise is controlling the environment and making sure that you are set up to succeed in the environment. Mind noise is quieting our brains and getting ourselves ready to let go of waking and begin sleeping. And this week we're talking about body noise, which are all of those disruptors, illness, pain that can um, stop you from having good sleep. And so about 35 to 44% of people who have insomnia have some other condition that's causing the insomnia. It's not just lack of sleep. And there are a lot of things can lead us to not sleep, including anxiety, depression, pain, um, real sleep disorders like uh, um, needing a CPAP, having sleep apnea, uh, having primary insomnia, but things like stroke, dementia, lung disease, a whole list of conditions that can cause us to be um, have less quality sleep than we would like to. Some of these are fixable, some of these are not. Today we're really going to look at the things that are relatively easily controllable. And so we're going to begin with recommending smoking cessation. Obviously we know that it's not good to smoke, but did you know that it disrupts your natural sleep rhythms? And so stopping all tobacco products is really important if you want to get a good night's sleep. Alcohol is another disruptor of our natural sleep architecture. So although it feels like having a glass of wine or a beer can relax you and help you get to sleep, if you're having difficulty sleeping and you're not feeling rested, it's really important to discontinue the use of alcohol because it changes the way that our, our bodies respond to sleep and prevents us sometimes from getting into those deep phases of sleep that we talked about two weeks ago. And then caffeine. Even if you feel like caffeine doesn't affect you, I'm going to encourage, if you're looking at improving your sleep pattern, try two weeks without caffeine and just see if there's a difference. For many people, they don't notice the difference until they discontinue it entirely. So think about discontinuing caffeine. The other thing that I think we don't think about is that medications can interfere with sleep as well. Anything from heart rhythm drugs to water pills that make us get up to go to the bathroom, to steroids like prednisone for different conditions, hormones, but you might be surprised to learn that antihistamines like Benadryl, which we often take to encourage sleep, can disrupt the natural pattern of sleep that we should be having. Tylenol PM, the PM part is Benadryl. And so we turn to this medication to help with sleep, but in the long run, it can disrupt that natural sleep architecture and prevent us from getting to the deep phases of sleep that we need to to repair and restore our bodies and our minds. Sedatives also disrupt our natural sleep architecture. And again, in the short term, no problem. But it's over the long term when we rely on these things for good sleep that we need to um, think about discontinuing those as well. So for body noise, what do we have to do to get our bodies ready for sleep? We talked two weeks ago about not making ourselves sleep, because we can't do that without medication, but rather letting go of waking. And how do we get our bodies to let go of our wakeful state so that we can go into a state of good sleep? Well, we do need to manage all of our medical conditions, so managing hypertension and diabetes. So making sure you're connecting with your doctor and, and maximizing the control of any conditions that you have underlying. We also need to add more movement. Sitting at a desk all day, sitting on the couch all day, not moving also disrupts our sleep. Even though we feel tired, we need to move. And many people um, find a benefit to regular walking or regular exercise. I use the word movement on purpose. I'm not talking about you need to go run on the treadmill. Um, I'm talking about moving in some way. 
Some people, however, find movement stimulatory, and so not moving within four hours of bedtime helps a lot of people. The other thing we can um, control is not having big meals at the end of the day. A full stomach can sometimes lead to heartburn or reflux or discomfort or digestive issues that might not be in the front of your mind as uncomfortable, but as we try and get into that deep phase of sleep, it may wake us up more than we think that it does. So avoiding big meals at the end of the day can be helpful. So if you are considering reducing your caffeine intake, I'm gonna recommend that you do it over two weeks. Those of us who like caffeine or like coffee or tea and drink caffeine on a regular basis, if we stop cold turkey, we can get headaches and irritability, and we don't need to. So gradually reduce your caffeine intake over about two weeks. Stop alcohol and tobacco use, we discussed that already. Avoid naps. I know it's a hard one, but when we are trying to establish a regular sleep pattern, which means going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time, avoiding naps can help us do that. We should reduce light exposure before we go to bed as well. In our times when electricity is here with us and we have lights on 24 seven, our brains think we should be awake. And 100 years ago, when it would start to get dark, well, this time of year, around 7.30 or so, we would begin to get the signals from our environment that it was time to rest and it was time to sleep. And now with screen time and lights on all the time, our brains don't get the same signal. And so dimming lights, turning off overheads, turning on um, you know, lower dimmable lights can make a big difference. And then that regular sleep and wake cycle, going to bed at the same time, getting up at the same time, even on the weekends. Again, this is a challenging one, particularly if you have to get up early during the week for work or for, to take care of your children. Not always pleasant to have to do that on the weekend when you might like a lie-in, but also really important to send the message to your body and your brain that this is what I want you to do. I want you to sleep during these times and be awake during the others. And so th these are um, the ways that we can now address body noise in addition to the bed and the mind noise that we discussed over the past two weeks. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday.